What is up, everybody? Welcome into episode 33 of the Brahma Bullpen. Another winning episode. Let's go, baby. Brahma's 2-0 and leading the XFL Conference. This week, we're going to have two videos again. This is going to be our review bi- video. We're going to do a little bit of power rankings, and we're going to show you the Brahma Bullpen Player of the Week. No more fooling around. Let's get into it. So standings after week two, pop the graphic up there, producer. Brahmas lead the conference uh, and beat Memphis. The crazy thing about this game is it it ended just like one of the games did for us last year when we played St. Louis in the Dome. We kept the ball in the fourth quarter, fourth and 12, and, you know, wound up getting the touchdown. We scored a couple touchdowns with 28 seconds to left goal in the game. Uh, we'll, we'll have some of the highlights later. So it was kind of like uh, it was our turn to win in some crazy fashion, uh, keeping the ball after a score. Every single game in the UFL this week was close. You know, just a couple quick hitters on those because this is the Brahma bullpen, and we're here to talk about the Brahmas, not everybody else. But uh, St. Louis won. They went one and one. I will tell you, they do look extremely beatable. Uh, the Renegades are 0-2, but Luis Perez has been the most accurate quarterback in the league. Uh they're definitely not an 0-2 team. I mean, they are 0-2, but they're better than an 0-2 team. They just had a couple of weeks of stiff competition uh, going up against St. Louis and Birmingham. So I expect to see Arlington uh, start winning some games here real quick. Um, you know, the other Texas team down there in Houston uh, lost their quarterback over the this past game, and then they brought in Senate, the former Brahmas quarterback. And uh, the offense looked like it ran a lot better. The defense looks to be extremely tough. Um, so watch for them to start winning some games in the USFL side. Um, you know, I just think that every team is so good and everything's so close. The difference between 2-0 and and 0-2 uh, is mixed with a little bit of luck, a little referee help, and then a little bit of dog. I'm going to say a little bit of dog. That's what the Brahmas got in them. Uh, these guys fight till the end. Uh, Birmingham Stallions, they seem to be the uh, most dominant team, but uh, San Antonio seems to be right there with them. So let's jump into the Brahma Bullpen Power Rankings. Uh, Throw that graphic up there, producer. I do want to say that these are not the United Football Media Group Power Rankings. If you follow the United Football Media Group, you'll see their Power Rankings come out every week. I get to vote on that as part of the United Football Media Group out here in the cow pasture. Uh, these are my power rankings. These are what I voted for. So you can see I got Brahma's number one and Birmingham Stallions number two. I truly feel those two teams could be flipped, one or two, either way. Uh, I think you can't go wrong there. And we won't know till week nine who's better. But uh, right now they're both 2-0, and oh, and this is the Brahma bullpen. So maybe a little bit of homer put them up at number one. Uh, St. Louis, I got them at number three. You know, they lost a very close game to the Panthers uh, week one. Got that 64-yard field goal got them, uh, and then they came back and did what they did this past weekend. So I think St. Louis is uh, probably the best one-on-one team. Uh, then we got the D.C. defenders, who the Brahmas played week one, and uh, you know D.C. beat Houston up in D.C. A crazy stat, right? They've never lost a game inside Audi Field. So uh, those guys definitely got a home field advantage up there with the beer snakes and the lemon heads. I put them up at number four, uh, one and one right there with St. Louis. Uh, and then the Memphis Showboats, uh, also one and one uh, Memphis's defense is good. They talk a lot about Case Cookies, but his completion percentage for the season is 56.3%. Not really all that great. Uh, definitely need to see some improvement there. Uh, I got them ranked at number five. Uh, Michigan uh, has the worst completion percentage in the whole league at 55%. So that kind of puts you, if you think Perry is doing a, a bad job up in Michigan, understand your boy Cookie Cookies is only uh, 1.3% higher than them. Uh, Arlington's off to a great start, uh, but they've given up the most points in the league, 54 points so far in two games. That's the most anybody's given up this year. I will say that uh, Luis Perez is the most accurate quarterback uh, in the league right now. So, hey, man, if they could just, get a couple stops and uh, keep converting on offense. 
uh, who knows, right? But uh, that's where we stand right now. And then Houston down all the way at the bottom. You know, unfortunately, uh, they're the worst looking of all the teams. But Reed Senate came in, and they're looking better than what they were. So with that, we're going to jump into the stats page, week two stats. This is the review of the Memphis and San Antonio game. Go ahead and pop that stat up there, producer. Uh, so real quick, week two, the Brahmas won, obviously. We got three total touchdowns. Memphis only scored one touchdown. So that's the first touchdown the Brahmas defense have given up all year. One touchdown in two games. Um, our points, we beat them by one point, 20 to 19. We'll show the highlights here in a little bit. Uh, one thing that's pretty crazy, uh, Chase Garbers, for as bad as the first three quarters were in this game, ended the game with a 73% completion percentage. And Case Cook is ended the game with a 55% completion percentage. What else do you need to know? Uh, passing yards for the Brahmas, 287 to 194. Uh, the rushing yards are uh, going to be a little misleading, but, uh, you know, we really did not run the ball very well. You can see we had uh, 37 yards. We averaged 3.3 yards per attempt. And then you look at the Memphis Showboats yards, 130 yards, but that equates to 3.6 yards per attempt. So they just ran the ball a lot more than we did, uh, but they weren't any more efficient, right? 3.3 yards per rush versus 3.6 yards per rush. Uh, third down conversions, not good. Three out of 11 for the Brahmas, four out of 12 for uh, Memphis. Wasn't good for either team. Brahmas went one for eight in third down conversions last year. I mean, excuse me, last week. I said, I said year. What a retard. Uh, anyway, so last week, one for eight. This week, three for 11. Uh, but a crazy stat is the red zone stats. If you look at the Brahma's red zone stats, they are three for three, and the Showboats went one for six. So they got into the red zone six times and only scored once. That's a red zone defense. That's exactly what the Brahma's did last week. They let D.C. move it between the 20s, but when it got inside the red zone, shut them down. Pretty much the same thing with the Showboats. So that red zone defense, when that field gets smaller, uh, the Brahma's have found a way to work that to their advantage. Uh, and then here's a crazy stat, and we're going to show some videos for some of these penalties later. But Brahma's 14 penalties, okay, for 142 yards versus seven penalties for 62 yards. And it was even more skewed than that. Uh, some of those penalties that they were throwing on the showboats towards the end of the game were pretty much like we better make sure these numbers look closer penalties uh, just to keep people from complaining. But we gave the showboats eight first downs eight eight first downs on penalties two on one drive that eventually led to a score that i know off the top of my head but you can't give up eight first downs just on penalty uh we got some uh, receiving stats i just want to go over you know at the end of this episode we'll talk about player of the week it was real close for the brahma bullpen brahma player of the week between cody latimer and, and Dronte kirkland uh latimer excuse me latimer had eight receptions 91 yards and a touchdown kirkland had seven receptions 53 yards and a touchdown stevenson had six receptions for 103 yards and a touchdown so i mean those guys are all doing the work got a three-headed monster there out there catching the ball for chase garbers i really wanted uh to give player the game to one of these guys but we had to go uh with the quarterback we'll show the stats later on him uh showboats receiving their leading receiver had 58 yards the 194 total, and they just had the one touchdown. So Case Cook is, is not cooking. He hasn't started cooking yet this season, and he needs to go ahead and step up. But uh, there's a quick rundown of the of uh, the stats from the game that were critical to the Brahma's victory, a 20-19 to victory, very close ball game. We're going to get into some of the highlights. First thing we're going to do is look at some of these penalty highlights, and then we'll end showing – the uh, last bit of the fourth quarter, which is pretty much all you need to see to uh, know what happened in the ball game, right? So uh, with that being said, let's go ahead and play that first video. Let me get my magical computer device in my hand up here. And we are going to roll it. He's sneaky athletic. The dude just can, he's got a good feel of the game. And if you cover down, he's going to take off. 22 seconds remain, a timeout to work with for the Showboats. Already in front by 10. Cookus avoids the pressure, has a man, in zone and incomplete. Jonathan Adams was open, a penalty marker flies. Darius Phillips in coverage. 
15 yards. Yeah, more 15. Defensive number pass two. number two. Okay, we're getting all 15 yards. Sorry, I can't hear you. Did you say number two? Number two. Got it. Oh, we're getting all 15 yards. Got it. Pass interference. Defense, number two. 15 yard penalty and an automatic. First down. So, Kirk, that's the third PI infraction against San Antonio in the half. Yeah, first of all, how do you get beat deep in this situation? You should already stay on top, but the double move and a nice throw by Cook is. I don't know if that was pass interference. I just thought that was great coverage by Phillips. He got there and the ball bounces what? Off the Adams on the face mask. So I don't know if that's a penalty. I thought that was just a great defensive play by Phillips. You know, it's pretty bad when a defender plays perfect defense and he's rewarded with a nonsense penalty. And it was a max 15-yard penalty. You know, in the NFL, that would have been it to the one, one or two-yard line because it was in the end zone. But uh, good thing here in the UFL, the rules are uh, 15 yards is the max. Uh, but regardless, that was not a penalty. And there was a couple of other PI calls that were very questionable. Speaking of questionable, let's watch this next penalty. So there's a rover. So the rover is the spy. So I guess Will Reed's listening. He's got the spy. So find the rover who's going to spy. And there goes the spy on the quarterback. Third down and four. Cookus releases a pass incomplete. And San Antonio finds a way. Adams thought he could grab it. And there is a penalty marker. It was high and late. I, I didn't see a second act. But no, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't okay. need a second act. I did high and Okay, late. what number you got? Uh, rough in the passer, defense number nine. High okay, and late. Mayday, we got rough in the passer, defense number nine, lot high and late. Hmm. It was Wyatt Ray. Can you imagine another first down on third down as we take a look at the U.S. Army Command Center with Mike Pereira? Want to break through here, ball out, hits him right about the second step and high. One last look. Okay, we're going to stay with it. It is a high hit. Looks like he might hit some of the helmet. So we're going to stay with the roughing the passer. All right. On number nine. Got it. See this one here. Personal foul. Roughing the passer. Defense. Number nine. 15-yard penalty and an automatic. First down. Six times a day, Memphis has gotten a first down via a penalty. And this is something you just can't do. Did you catch that? We're going to stay with it because he might have made contact to the helmet. And if you watch that replay, it, the arm barely grazes. If that might, might, might have made contact. I understand that when you're going to review plays like a coach's challenge, it has to be beyond a shadow of a doubt, right? It has to be irrefutable evidence. Uh, that it happened. But this wasn't a coach's challenge. This was an official's challenge. Uh, they reviewed this play uh, on their own. It wasn't Wade Phillips throwing a flag. And they said that might have been high. Absolutely ridiculous. That was one of the plays that gave him a first down. And they wound up scoring on that drive. You know, uh, not, to, not to cry over spilt milk, so to speak, but Every game you could pretty much complain about refs on either side. All you want is for the plays to be equivalent, for the flags to be equivalent. Uh, that way the refs are not controlling the game. There was a play later on in the game where Jaronte Kirkland uh, caught the ball and literally got speared helmet to helmet in the middle of the field. Everybody could clearly see it, but no, no flag was called. Uh, what's the difference? I don't know. Uh, how can you miss that and not miss one? People are imperfect, but, man, there's games on the line. And we're very fortunate that our offense stayed in the game and really, really wanted to win more than Memphis. Let's watch the last of the game. The Brahmas wound up scoring 12 points, two touchdowns, in like 28 or 30 seconds. Let's watch it.
Party, the touchdown gives them six. Correct. But I love this conversation now. From the 10, and here we go. Garber's in zone. Incomplete. Abrams broke it up. But this ball needs to get to the 40-yard line for this game to extend. Fourth and 12, empty backfield for Garbers. Ready, ready, go! And he's gone all afternoon to survey and throw at the line, and let's see. He's got it. Right at the 40 was Kirkland. Let's go, let's go. Drive continues. Garber Stevenson into plus territory. Barrel down to the 45. Ready, ready, go. On second and 10. Bring Garbers. Pressure. Stevenson wide open. Still on his feet. Stevenson ushered out inside the 20. Oh, that's a huge play to run toward the sideline and then get out of bounds. Garber's cool in the pocket. He gets it to Stevenson. And then the ability to make guys side. miss in the middle of the field. Arch in two scores. San Antonio on the comeback trail. The out pattern is there to Justin Smith. Not enough time. Probably's out of timeouts. Do not have a challenge. Garbers in zone! And it's caught! Cody Latimer! San Antonio's in front! Unbelievable! And Cody Latimer, the guy who I said, he's your guy in the fourth quarter. Chase Garbers extends the play, and he finds enough time. What is up? Did you hear the names that were mentioned? Kirkland, Stevenson, Latimer, even Justin Smith getting in on there, getting some of the action, making big grabs at critical times. Uh, I'd like to point out a couple of things. Uh, one, the fourth and twelve after we scored the first touchdown to Kirkland in the corner, a lot of people were like, hey, you know, he was down short. These balls have microchips in them. There's a thing called forward progress. There's no human error here. The microchip of that football, when Kirkland first caught it, was at the first down marker, and he got forward progress, just like everybody else in every other football league gets forward progress. I realized by the time he hit the ground, he was a little bit short. We all saw that. But forward progress, digital tracking. Then I'd like to point out, did you see uh, Chase Garbers making those throws on point, on the move? Those wide receivers were moving across the field, got hit in stride with the ball, and were able to continue to the sideline and get out of bounds. That's on Memphis Showboats. I have no idea why they're not sealing the edges and why they're not – I mean, they should have never let our wideouts get – out of bounds and stop the clock. Hey, our wideouts maybe are faster, or maybe the motion that we uh, went to pre-snap caused the defense to get out of place. Either way, they had plenty of opportunities to stop us and just couldn't do it. So I don't want to hear anybody saying uh, that the Brahmas didn't earn this victory because we basically got our butt kicked for three quarters before that. And then, of course, you see Chase Garbers on the move, outside the pocket, showing his mobility. Remember, we call him a threat and a half here in the bullpen. He's not a pocket passer. He's not a true runner, dual threat. You'd call him, uh, he's a threat and a half. So he's got the wheels needed to make that pocket work for him and get out on the edge and make those throws. And then, of course, the best tight end in the league, Cody Latimer, making that touchdown grab to keep the Brahmas 2-0, 20-19 victory. Absolutely wild finish. If you didn't get to watch the game, go back and watch the fourth quarter. All 20 points the Brahmas scored were in the fourth quarter. At halftime, the Brahmas only had like 14 yards of total offense. I think net yards was like eight. The first half was horrendous. Couldn't get anything going. Couldn't run the ball. Couldn't throw the ball. Their defense did what they needed to do to shut us down. Plus, our, we were getting so many penalties on defense that all they had to do was go out there and pretend to throw the ball, and we were getting a PI or a rough in the passer call or something. Uh, I think I saw my first holding call of the year in, in this game. So just, just a wild penalty-ridden uh first half and i'm not blaming it on the refs. some of those penalties were our fault but the rough in the pass for the first down and the pi in the end zone was pretty ridiculous of course we already saw those videos with that we're going to jump on to our final graphic of the of the day of the episode final score brahma's 20 chobos 19 we chose chase garbers as our brahma's player of the game he leads the league 
now through two games in overall completion percentage. This is both games combined. These are total stats for Garbers, 73.8% completion percentage, which is wild, especially if you think about the first three quarters we had against the Showboats. Five touchdowns, uh, just unbelievable. Uh, these stats and these uh, percentages are coming off pff.com, so it's all PFF scores. Uh, there was one thing on there called an adjusted completion percentage, basically meaning that the pass was thrown and it was on target, went where it was supposed to go, right? He's also the highest in the league in that uh, metric at 87.9%. 87.9% of his passes are on target. He's only completing 38, he's completing 73.8% of those. The rest of those are being dropped. It's not like he missed a throw. So 87.9% of his passes, uh, passes are on the mark. Uh, wild game. Go back and watch it. Uh, keep your eyes open for our next bullpen episode where we preview the St. Louis Battlehawk coming into the dome. Brahmas are 2-0, baby. Let's go. Let's end it with a horn forward. Let's go, Brahmas.